this literally was Bioware's chance to take the races that they have established in the Dragon Age lore and really push them apart, really differentiate them, really like lean more heavily into the design aspect of these races and enhance them. But what we got instead was a very homogenized reduction of all those features and make them all just look like people. Very ordinary, boring people. Sad. Oh, you guys knew this video was coming, man. We got to talk about this. The Dragon Age Veilguard character creator. You guys know that this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I've worked on quite a few character creators in my career. The one that I can say out loud was the character creator for the MMO Rift. I did a lot of work on that with heads, blend shapes, um, texture complexions, eyebrows, tattoos, makeups, all that kind of stuff. I can't publicly say the other character creators that I've worked on, even though they were really big titles. I did a lot of contract work. It was almost like a liaison for those ones. And the reason I'm saying this is just to kind of establish a baseline for the whole idea that I do have some experience in this. I, I do know what I'm talking about and I know what goes into making a character creator. I know the technicalities behind it. I know how this all works. And, and what's required from a development perspective. So I can also call out what is just an excuse and what isn't. The first thing I want to start off with is actually something really positive. Okay, I know. I know. It's probably the best I've ever seen. And that is the hair. They have done a phenomenal job with the hairstyles in this game. Whoever was responsible for that tech, A+. Plus. Home run. No question about it. The hair is phenomenal. But... That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the extent of all the good things I can say about this character creator. So I had beef with the Dragon Age Inquisition character creator as well, man. I, I did not like that. I hated it, to be honest. I felt like every face you created in that game was just a really boring looking human face. I want to be a hero, man. I want to be the best of the best whenever I create a character in a game. I want to be an Adonis. I don't want to be me. I, I want to be something better. And a lot of games, even from the recent past, allowed you to do that. You could actually create something close to yourself, or you could create an Adonis, or you could create an absolute hideous monster. The whole range was there. But I don't know what this fascination is with current games, man. It's like, nah, you can only create kind of a normal looking person. You can't create an Adonis, a supermodel. It's like the focus has, has come back and you can't create traditionally beautiful looking people anymore. Just normal looking people and really ugly looking people. And you know what that is? You know what that actually is? That is the exact opposite of diversity. You're restricting the amount of different faces, races that you can create. You're squeezing that down into just a, a select few. The exact opposite of diversity. So let, let's just get that out there and call a spade a spade, yeah? It's very clear. This isn't the first time we're seeing this stuff, man. Star Wars Outlaws, full of it full of absolutely normal looking people. Concord, full of absolutely normal looking people. I mean, we, we could just keep going. I could keep naming games and just being like normal, 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 normal. And it's, it's a trend. It's a trend and it's a bad one. And I genuinely think it's gonna cost these developers, man. I think that they're trying to cater to a different crowd and it's gonna fall apart. It's gonna blow up in their faces. Remember again, my whole angle on this is specifically the faces and the, the homogenization of all the, the really cool things that they could potentially have done. Again, I said the same thing about the Dragon Age Inquisition character creator because we made a huge jump from Dragon Age 2 to Inquisition in terms of graphics capabilities and technical capabilities. They could have implemented and done so much more then. They still didn't. This is a whole bunch further now and they could have done a whole bunch more, but they haven't. So let's just take a quick look at what they could have done with the Canari. Look at this shit. Look at what, look at what we could have had. We could have had this. Imagine if in the game you could create that. Yeah, you can't. Forget it. You gotta run around as little Timmy with horns instead. Deal with it. Terrible. Now I get it. Some of you are saying, oh, but that's like really in depth. They would have had to, you know, include a whole bunch of different stuff. Like they would have actually had to do a bunch of different wrinkles and faces and really mess with the character created just for this one race. So, Baldur's Gate 3 did it with the Dragonborn. There's no excuse. From a technical perspective, 
There's no excuse. And what does this really mean from a creative perspective? You can basically grab three, four, five different heads on a site just like MetaHuman or on a 3D scan website, generic looking people's heads. You can pay 30 to 50 bucks for one head. You start off with those base heads and now you can put them into like a little morph slider and you can kind of blend between those three heads. And that is the face for your character. Man, I, I personally have issue with that because I know how low effort that actually is. Those are not handcrafted faces, man. This is why we've got this such generic looking human face thing going on with a lot of these games. They are base human faces at the very extreme points of these morphs. But anywhere inside is some weird hybrid of multiple faces. It's a reduction of the uniqueness of each of those faces because you're blending this face with that face and it's halfway in between. So you end up with this really weird rounded softness to all of the features. You can never get an interesting face out of that. And to push this to the extreme, everyone in the games industry is talking about AI, AI art, right? AI has taken our jobs. Dude, that is the first 3D job that AI will take. Generating a shitload of boring looking humans to populate a city with boring and generic NPCs for the video game. This is going to be the first thing that they use AI for in 3D. It's terrible. So why would we be like proud of this? Why would we be going like, yay, this is amazing. Oh, such a good character creator. No, dude, it's the exact opposite. It is less handcrafted artist style work it's nothing unique for dragon age anyone can do this you could do it with some really basic knowledge you could download the free unreal engine you could grab some metahuman heads doing some basic tutorials make up a thing that morphs between them you've got the basic foundation of what's happening in this game bare minimum bare minimum effort and it's not what you expect from industry professionals especially when they have like this to kind of pull from we could have had that they could have leaned right into this like amazingness to make this even more clear if you go into youtube and you type in dragon age veil vale guide character creator and check out all the thumbnails most of what you see looks really really similar to each other it's like everybody who played with this character creator kind of roughly ended up around the same thing anyway that should tell you how little diversity is in the character creator i get it there's lots of sliders there's lots of bells and whistles i get all of that but if the end result is is that they kind of all look roughly the same anyway what does that tell you i know that i'm being pretentious when i say this i i know that but if i was the art director for this game I would have gone 100% backwards for the Kunari. I would have leaned heavily into the whole Oxen vibe, right? The physicalities of Iron Ball. I would have made the dudes massive like that. Really gnarly horn designs, really like deep wrinkles, real crazy facial features, tiny eyes, big cheekbones, massive jaws, huge heads of horns. I would really, really have exaggerated that whole concept. And for the female Kunari, I would have done the same thing. I would have made them super masculine, man. Not feminine at all. I would have made them hulks. I wouldn't have smoothed their faces down. I would have made them hard, gnarly, like bodybuilders, you know, ripped out of their mind, veiny. That's how I would have done it. I would have made them match each other. I wouldn't have made them all soft, rounded, you know, makeup and all that. No, dude piercings bones i would have just really gone into it it's it was their chance to push this and expand it into the realms of holy shit we've never seen them quite like this before and i would have done the exact same thing for the elves by the way i would have leaned heavily more into traditional elves i would have made the eyes bigger like rotate the eyes out make them like very very almond like go back to the elves of old man have them hauntingly beautiful there is no ugly elves. None. They're all supernaturally beautiful. Like, have some differences in the races, man. The dwarves, make them all short. All of them are stocky. The nose is thick. The cheekbones massive. Big round heads. Hard. Like, really hard, but just stocky and short. And, and you know, really ballooned features. And even then, 
if you must have super generic looking humans, keep that for just the humans, you know? Why not just have the super average looking people just as the humans? There you go. Diversity. We got the whole, I just literally listed the whole range there. We've got the super masculine beastly guys. We've got the little short stocky guys. We've got the hauntingly beautiful race, you know? But I feel like where we are at with this character creator is just everyone kind of has to look roughly the same. Everyone's got to have makeup. Everyone's got to have the same tattoos. Everyone's got to have the same eyebrows, the same lipstick. Everyone's got access to the same beards, the same facial hair, men and women. It's, it, it's ridiculous, man. It's like you're, you're stripping all the cultural differences away from everyone. So everyone can have everything. If everyone can look like a human, and everyone can have access to all the beards like a dwarf beard on a human, for example. Why can't I put the Kunari horns on my human? Now there's another aspect that a lot of people have been talking about, like the, 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 the fact that there's like a top scar surgery option and stuff like that. Dude, I don't really care about this. Uh, the more options that are in the character creator, the better. I don't want to delve into whether those things should be in a character creator or they shouldn't. Dude, it's an option. Who cares, right? Get it in there. More options for people, the better, right? None of that actually means any anything. It, it doesn't mean there's no hidden meaning. It's just another option. Don't like it, don't use it. That's how it should be. A choice. Tick, yes, nope. X, don't want to use it. All good. I do think it's a little bit odd how you can only really have a very small breast size and a tiny butt. That's just weird. Like, where is all the representation for the voluptuous women in this world? You know? There are many women in this world that have large breasts. The fact that there is no option to have large breasts in this game, I just find that weird. There are lots of women in the world that have big butts. The fact that you can't have a big butt in this game is just weird. If we're talking about normal looking people, there's a ton of normal looking people that have large breasts and big butts, man. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out a thing that also fits into this whole category of like, we gotta, we gotta like desexualize only the female characters. All the men, big biceps, big chest, big pecs, abs, all the things that are sexually attractive on a man. Oh, we got to have all those. But we got to reduce the breast size and reduce the butt size for all the women. And at the same time, give them big square jaws too. Guys, I, I, I really can't be the only one who's looking at these things and seeing them the way that I'm seeing them. I just can't be. I know that there's more people out there who are thinking like me and are just like, man, this is, this is weird. Like, what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments, man. We'll have a conversation. I try to reply to as many people as I can in the comments um, because I do like the discussion around this kind of stuff. People I know in my last video got a little bit prickly because the, talking about the whole diversity and inclusivity, all that kind of stuff is a real double-edged sword, right? It's a radioactive topic. People get a little bit butthurt about it. But I think people miss the fact that I'm coming at this from always from the perspective of like art creation, right? and creativity and expression and the less of that that you have in games which is literal makeup this is literal fantasy this is the perfect place for us to go ham we can go buck wild on all of these things make up fantastical races and everything like we've got all the options available to us to do whatever we want why would we homogenize that down into the most basic shit stupid we need to keep creativity alive man and specifically at the very pointy end of game dev, these are the people that should be leading the way and they should be guiding lights for everybody else. They should be. But this example of a character creator is not. Except for the hair. The hair is good. Seriously, A+. Plus. They should have kept that energy with all of the faces and bodies. Then we'd be having a, this would be a completely different video and I would be 
happy to lift it up on a pedestal and be like bro everybody else needs to be doing this but this is not that character creator once again thank you to all of my patrons all of the people who subscribe to me on twitch all of the people who subscribe to me here on youtube as well um you guys are awesome thank you very very much i really appreciate all of your support there's links to all my twitch and patreon all that kind of stuff down below see you guys in the next one